<laughs> Welcome back, Anto. How are we doing? Good. Good? Good. Feel nice? Yeah. Mike, how about you? You guys are just matching Good, with your little uh, glasses. No, he's this, trying to they, match me. Th- this is a uh, new little podcast, just us three, right? The three best friends. Oh, yeah? Oh, three right. best friends. Well, what do you call us friends, Anto? I don't know. Let's not, let's not exaggerate, co-workers. okay? Co-workers. Co-workers. <laughs> I like that. Did you see the Champions League draw? <laughs> yeah. What'd you think? I, I have Well, you weren't part of the Champions League well, draw. Listen. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the see. That's what you call friends. That's what he's okay, trying to do. He messaged me he's going to okay. do that too before we started. He well, you that. didn't even own the champ. You didn't even play in any cups, okay? <laughs> he, he's as, ma- as many European competitions as swallowed. This, this is the only oh, cup. Oh, my God. Got. Anyway, uh, a little, uh, I mean, what do you can expect? I mean, uh, you have to be able to, uh, to to match up with any any team at this time. I mean, at this point, mm. you know, Barcelona, not a big deal, but it's going to be tough. I was it's surprised be- people being uh, like uh, surprised that it was a tough draw. My thought is when you finish second, you can't complain. Yeah, because you, you have fin- the toughest ones. You exactly. have the toughest opponents. If you finish first and then you get a tough team, it's yeah. like, oh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. When you finish second, you're automatically you're putting expected. yourself in a yeah. position. I actually don't think it went bad for us. What? Except Lazio, bro. Okay, but again, I was already assuming that Lazio's not going to go through. Mm. They needed, They needed like, you needed more of a, I would be more surprised if they got a really good draw. I guess I should put well, it like yeah, that. yeah, obviously. But they could have got a more favorable team. But what did also. you expect? What did you think they were going mean, to get? No, Listen, yeah, I get it. I thought I was scared that Barcelona the other teams. Or I didn't Atletico, want to get. They're just a you know they they tough team. They're a tough team. Okay, Inter. You think he's got a, a red carpet to just walk through? It's not going to happen. The like only that. thing that scares me too they're is the, fight. the La Liga teams. Uh, said he got two of them, and they usually struggle with La Liga teams from the past. Always, I don't know what it always. is. Uh, the style of play or something it scares me. I asked Giuseppe Rossi that. He said that uh, when he was at Villarreal. I think he said like five out of six games, he beat Italian teams. Mm-hmm. And he even couldn't put his finger on what it is. I think it's a way that they hold possession of the ball. Like tactically, we're really good, but we don't often get like dominated. But once they start passing the ball, we're uh, we're, we're difficult. Let's, let's break down each one. Mm-hmm. So Inter got Atletico, in case anyone missed it. Napoli got Barcelona. Um, Lazio got Bayern Munich. <laughs> let's keep going down the list. Uh, Milan got Rennes. Mm-hmm. Roma got Feyenoord again, they, and uh, we don't know Atalanta and Fiorentina. They moved to the next round, so they didn't have to go through this exactly. draw. Let's mm-hmm. start off with the top: Inter and Atletico Madrid, which it's tough. I'll agree with you. Atletico is a tough team. They're in amazing form. Griezmann scoring, Morata scoring goals. Simeone knows Inter extremely well. He's put it together. I was looking into them a little bit though. Their away form is is not uh, mm-hmm. as great. They're very good at home though. Mm-hmm. They're super dominant and. Inter probably prefer to play against a team that holds the ball rather than a team that's like a bunch of grinders and like can sit back in a low block. But I still feel confident with this Inter side. I feel confident amongst anyone that you go against. Yeah, yeah. I think for this one, I definitely think it's more favorable for Inter's side. Yeah, it's a La Liga team and stuff. But this is not the same Atletico from the years past. And if you would have to pick one team uh, that can really give it to Atletico, I, I would say Inter for sure. Because I think they're solid in every position. And I think uh, Simeone is going to really struggle against uh, this Inter side. Yeah. Anybody yeah. will be struggling against Inter. You have to see the status of form of the team yeah, at yeah. the time that sure. they're going to get them yeah. in. No, it's Let's say you got a couple of injuries on, on the Atletico side or maybe a couple of injuries on the Inter side. If those are key players or key injuries, that can, uh, you know, that can determine uh, yeah. you know, the outcome. Still a few of, months uh, till the game's That's February. what I'm saying. Yeah. So I said, you're going to see how healthy... And how well the team has been playing at yeah. the time that they're going to match up sure. again. They're going to just face the only, each other. The only thing is when you watch Inter's, uh, you look at the communication, you look at the injuries that they had. They played this weekend um, against the Lazio side, which I know Lazio is not doing good, but Inter hasn't won there since 2018. Mm. They went there without a right wing back. I mean, Darmian hasn't played right wing back very often. They had mm. Dumfries and Cuadrado both out. They're still missing center backs. So Inter, they keep saying that they're in a, not a great moment with in terms of missing players mm-hmm. and in terms of the way that they play because again it was almost picture uh perfect of exactly what happened against Napoli the exact same game where Lazio's playing 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 they make one mistake Inter's so good at capitalizing so when you play against a team like that for Inter they're still mm-hmm. not even at their best form yet they're getting results so by February they could be even better than what we're looking at right now mm-hmm. and they're already amazing 11 clean sheets in 16 games in the Serie A 39 goals scored you, you can't stop them. I mean, one thing, one thing that really gets me, gets to me. I mean, I, I do not understand how do you let you drop the level of concentration and you give Lautaro that 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 gold platter oh, yeah. goal in the first in the first half. Do you, you don't it was do a Marusic, things right? like that Marusic. because up, you know up to that point 
it was it was not a bad game. I mean, Lazio was, was, was countering, and uh, you know, all of a sudden yeah. you put yourself on the position now that you have to catch up, and then you have to open up, and you have to just uh, take risk, and then that what happened, then you get punished. So uh, I don't know. I think uh, Lazio, Lazio just. Uh, I don't. I didn't even realize that Luis Alberto was on the bench until almost uh, the you know before the goal. I said, "What? Luis Alberto is not part of the squad?" <clears throat> and then he was brought in when it was too late. So what are you going to do with that? He's always had issues with uh, Maurizio Sarri. Uh, it seems like it's opening up a uh, new ones. They said that it was managing energy levels, uh, fatigue. But I mean, you don't uh, you don't turn over against uh, Inter, especially because Lazio is desperate for points. Things are not being. They just tied Verona. They lost that late to go the right before that. They tied to Verona, mm -hmm. ten men Verona. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they yeah, were yeah, desperate. Yeah, You're right. playing at home. You needed something. That's the the bad feeling I have about uh about Lazio going up against Bayern Munich. I mean. What are, what are we gonna say about this game? Didn't, wait, didn't now that I think about it, didn't they play a few years ago, like three or four years ago, with the same matchup? Yeah, but yeah, it, I think right? they play. I think they played three times. Mm -hmm. They always get matched up. It's I, I'm pretty sure it was like three or four years ago. Lazio, and I, Lazio I think never makes it true. They, they, they would never make. I it. mean, there's a uh, I never Bayern are one of the favorites that. to win it all at the end of the day. So how much are we really expecting? Hey, but listen, Lazio, Lazio. I mean, uh, player to player, you, you need a very a very good day. I mean, you, you have a. Nah. You, you, you think they're lucky. They need a miracle. A miracle. Yeah. Against Bayern Munich? Yeah. A red card or an handball uh, or anything you're, you're like that. Like like right you, you have to believe it, Mike. I mean, uh, uh, is Lazio uh, as a tough draw? Yes. But did you go over there already uh, with the idea that you, you know, you're going to, you just fold? No, no, you just go over okay. there and, uh, you know. Yo, they sit 11th place in Serie A. Mm -hmm. They sit in the bottom half of the table. The right side, like they look at it in Italy. And that the, is absurd. And they were second like last, last year. year. Do you believe this thing here? Oh my God. Yeah, and no they Euro. really didn't no lose. No Euro. Crazy amount. Yeah, no Europe. But that's a big, but that's a huge aspect. Their, a lot it's going to be their, their saving about. grace. Go through Bayern Munich and we'll forgive you. We'll forgive you for screwing up. Yeah, then, I don't uh, know. Maybe we'll, in one game, not two games. I, I think if Lazio did not qualify. <laughs> I think not in, not in 50 I'm games. Just if, if we get uh, one. I'm just saying if we're going to say, we've got to say. Sure, Lazio could we'll have hope. Could we'll have hope to be to put themselves on the AC Milan position. Because AC Milan, I was hoping for AC Milan to go completely out. Because he said, at least we concentrate on the campionato. Not that we wanna, we're going to win, but at least on the Champions League, making the, you know, the top four. But Lazio, Lazio, they, they got themselves now in the predicament because uh, they, they go out. Let's say they go out. Let's say they, I know when <coughs> they're going to get out. Okay? Let's say it. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm wrong, to be honest with you. What's your percentage? But for Lazio, eh, we're giving 15, 20, yeah. 20%. I was thinking that. 80, 20. 80, 20. So. If we're being nice. So Let go, us know in the comments if, if go, you agree. If they go out, at least it might be for them a... Uh, 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 there is not going to be an excuse, even though it's going to be late into the season. It's not going to be a, a, for them an excuse to say, "Hey, now we're going to try to make up either a, a UEFA a UEFA spot or a Champions League." Yeah. Champions League, I think they out. Imagine yeah. Sarri plays uh, the, B, the B team. If Sarri is still the coach, I don't true. think they will. Yeah. I don't think they will. You're right. You're right. If Sarri's they the might coach, be sacking in a couple himself. of months, a lot can happen. <laughs> I thought I thought we got rid of that word from your vocabulary. Sacking. I said terminating, sacking. Terminating. Terminating. Sacking. He will be terminating himself. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Terminated. <laughs> the Bayern Munich too. I watch a lot of their games. Defensively, they have a lot of lapses. But again, I'm talking about when they play against difficult teams, teams that put the pressure, teams that score goals for fun. Not a team like Lazio, who yeah, even yeah, for yeah. them in Serie A, they're struggling to score. They're struggling to possess the ball at all in the midfield. And then defensively, it's like do whatever you guys yeah. want. We'll we'll pass you the ball. We'll give you the opportunity. Against, can you imagine training all week to play against Inter? Or whatever they have a couple days because they're and, then the and then you give them Inter is so good they don't need anything mm -hmm. and then you put it on a platter like you just said to one of the best most informed strikers in all of Europe and Lataro by the way even when he doesn't do well the guy scores a goal he but, was having a, a quiet game he yeah. was pretty much a ghost mm -hmm. and now he scores again 29 calendar year goals in Serie A for, for Inter, this player yeah. for Inter um, but the, the most since 2000 but the crazy thing player. about that Lautaro thing is the confidence he has how mm. many people would have squared it off I think it was Turam on the other side he controlled the ball thought mm. about it stopped it and then chipped it over so many people would have first of all shot it immediately or shot to go for a penalty this guy went around everyone like traffic cones and he still calmly placed it over Provedel I, I was just like mm. This guy is really on it. It's, it's no fluke, no nothing. This guy just has it. Can I give you a situation? Oh, well. I saw somebody, uh, it was a former Inter player. I don't remember who it was. Was it better than me? It was somebody. Cassano. I was listening. I didn't watch to go back after that, but he was like, it reminded me a lot of the Champions League final when Lotaro was in that position. Uh, and he, 
Isn't that wild? And they screwed it up. Do you remember? I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. I thought about I'm that. Right. You're right. Uh, so it wasn't maybe, me that said it. So maybe oh. it shows the yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then again, you're not playing the Champions League final, final against either. Manchester City. You're, you're, you're playing Lazio. You're, you're playing Lazio. You're playing the ball. Half the table, Lazio. Yeah. Let's let's all of this negative talk about Lazio to just to, to finish up with the, with the Lazio. Uh, um, I thought you can say some end of positive. No, that's actually, that, would, that would become a motivation for them. You see, everybody they they they, they yeah. think that we're dead and all the stuff. Let let you know serve as a motivation. Victory. Yeah. So if they don't get if they don't get beat bad, you know, you might get a moral victory. Like oh my. God, I played I mean. Marusic captain that game. Oh yeah, <laughs> but well, to be fair, to they change. did. I gotta say, to top it off, a, a positive subject. Lazio did surprise me of getting out of their Champions League group. Fire Nord were on fire, and surprisingly, they finished over them. So maybe it is something. I'm not saying it is. They also tied uh, Atletico Madrid at home. Pro Vidal, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So also just to turn it back to Inter, who have to play Atletico Madrid. I'm like, oh, if Lazio can tie. At home. No, no, no. Listen, no. listen. No. Don't don't look at stats. No. <laughs> I know football never works. Believe so much. me. We're trying to right look at the positives too. He is right, right though. Whenever you Mike, try to add yeah, that, yeah, you're already yeah. asking. It's like it's like a, a team that beats Manchester City, no. like one game, no. and then you're like, no, oh, yeah, they could oh, win the Champions League. Like, yeah, by default, you have <laughs> to do that. Or it's like the team is like, oh, they have the advantage. They just need to draw this game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that. Whenever I hear that, oh man, that's the Mike. Here's the problem with the statistics. Okay, statistics is not a science. Okay, statistics is not a science. I mean, it is a science. Who is not? It's not How's because it not all you do, you make inferences. For example, for example, let me give a quick, a quick one. Secret smokes cause uh, lung cancer. I have news for you. I have seen smokers that they had two packs or three packs a day that they made it to 99 and people that never smoked, they got lung cancer. <laughs> so right, what I'm trying to smoke, tell you, kids. Yeah. listen, what I'm trying to tell you is that you make inferences, you just base all of those stats. Look at what, it's a perfect example. AC Milan, they hire those two guys over there that's supposed to be good at, with the numbers and all the stuff, and they fire Maldini and, uh, and, uh, and Gazzini. <laughs> so they fire, they fire somebody that, it doesn't look at stats. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, it yeah. makes stats like part yeah. of his, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, to be yeah. the uh, one, Small part mm. of a, of his judgment on yeah. on a player, and then you you end up just a, you know hiring player because oh he's very good on the left he does twenty five dribbles a, a game or he, he shoots six times or seven times you have to look how good is the the player you have to look at the personality can he play on a stadium like San Siro can he take the pressure yeah. can he do there are all of those that's, factors that's very hard to know but, you know if you just see what I'm saying, if you see a, a kid stats, that's playing in a smaller sta- league it's hard Marco, to be able to get to that tell you but that the stats they, they become zero when it comes zero. down to it what, does say something it's a it doesn't show everything that's it gives, what I'm it gives saying it's you a, a better chance to succeed you can do to predict the future that's what it is Sartori we're doing a deep dive on Sartori because Bologna is we're going to talk about Bologna but um, Sartori doesn't want to watch videos of players. He's like, I got to go there in person. I got to see this guy. Mm-hmm. He said before COVID, he never went to go. He never watched the video of a player before. He's like, I got to, I got to understand the person. I got to see them at a human level. And there's a lot of directors like this. Giuseppe Marotta is very famous for that. Going there and speaking to the person, speaking mm. to their family, seeing how they interact. They just like understanding the <laughs> problem. <laughs> they want the free voucher. <laughs> That's what I thought. I don't watch video. Fly with me, coupon. Yo, Mike, you might have just thrown them all under the bus. <laughs> oh, You're right. Okay, let's move on and, and talk about the other Champions League games, and then we'll do we'll mm-hmm. do Serie A. Um, Napoli, Barcelona, as you would call them. This group, this draw, this I know it looks really bad on paper, it's tough. and it's tough. It's going to be very tough. Mm-hmm. Barcelona, too, defensively, are have not been super sound. There's a lot of problems with Xavi. There's mm-hmm. fans that don't want him to continue next year. Mm-hmm. Will he be the he'll, he's going to remain as the coach? They're not going to fire the guy. But they haven't been amazing, Barcelona. I think they sit third or fourth in in La Liga at the moment, which is obviously not good by their standards. And when I've watched some of their performances, they've not been great. We have to say same thing with Napoli. Napoli at this moment have not been great, but come February. I could see things changing, and the reason why I say that. Cronatelia dealt with a lot of injuries. He was not confident. He wasn't informed. He's starting to put it together. He scored this weekend. Osimhen had the problems with his contract, with injuries, with not playing, with Rudy Garcia taking him off. He scored, and they won again this weekend. Assist if those two... Yeah, he scored an assist. Yeah, beautiful yeah. assist. If those, two, if those two put it together, they could create magic at any moment. 
That's my hope. Yeah. Didn't, my Barcelona, fa- didn't Barcelona lose one of the key players? Like, what was it? Uh, uh, Gavi, one of those? Uh, oh, he's injured. Yeah, yeah he's out for I, a long time. I think he's not going to be back for, no, uh, for no, the no. Champions. No, no, no. I think right? he's out for months. He tore his ACL. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think he's done for the season. Pro- okay. Close to it. The, the yeah. only negative, and the one one more positive before I'll give you the negative. Mm-hmm. Masari got through his tough period of really congested fixtures where he had to step in. Mm-hmm. He had to qualify for Champions League. He had to play against Inter, Juventus, Atalanta, all tough teams. Now he beat Cagliari. I hope by February he could put things together, and I think he will. The only problem, the only thing I can't stick up for is defensively. Yeah. How do you fix? Rakhmane, how do you fix Rakhmane Rakhmane that? Is not gonna get Unless you sign somebody in January, guy, but has are we really confident that no. that would happen? I mean, there's gonna be a lot of time for there. Plus, we didn't even add the African Cup of Nations. Uh, Zambo mm. and Gisa and Osiman two Napoli's huge starters over there, the star players. That they're going to be playing a little extra games, so then a few weeks later they're going to be playing in the Champions League. So that's definitely something to add. And yeah, Marco, I think the the glaring I didn't even problem think for about me that. that's, that's a great saying. point. But I didn't the, even think about and it. And the glaring problem for me is that defense. There's not. It's not like you can say, oh, they're going to get back in form. Their defense is just <laughs> not very good. Mm-hmm. So unless Barcelona, unless the midfield of mm-hmm. Napoli can really stop. Uh, Barcelona do it It's gonna mm. be a tough game I think this is gonna be Like one of those 50-50 Anyone can pass through I'm not really giving That edge to anyone I agree It's gonna be Okay a, a tough, I agree tough, I will uh, give an edge To Barcelona this. I gotta Slightly. be honest with you Yeah Because uh, Barcelona Barcelona huh, The quality You know the, 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 the game that they have It's mm. uh, Xavi Xavi I mean I'm not uh, I'm not Nobody's discussing You know It's, it's putting Xavi Under uh, the microscope he, he has shown As a player And has shown Even as a coach as that, a coach, uh, what is he showing? He has done. Yo, last year, last year it was close. No, he did build okay. a team from, he did build from a team. everything. No, from no, a, a lot, lot of youngsters. Players. No, listen, you listen. gotta give him some credit. Yeah, no. I like Xavi. We can look back at this and we'll see. He's not lasting there. Uh, I don't know. I, to he's be honest with there. you, I'm not saying he's not lasting, but he's done a lot. What are they building came, with? Though. What are they building with him? Listen, I mean, it's a new generation of Barcelona. Don't forget. Go check their own kids. They had a huge, huge, huge economic problems. Yeah. Okay. They're still facing. They're still facing the the rat that they. You're overspend right. and all the yeah. stuff. So having said that, I think Barcelona is got an edge over Napoli, and uh, I would say that January could be the key for uh, the owners of the team, whether it's uh, it's on on our side or on their side, to make some adjustment. Yeah. We have up problem a, with defensively with Napoli. Just go on the market, see what's pick available. Maybe yeah. you know. AC Milan is facing the same problem, even though we're not talking about AC Milan we're gonna right get now. We'll we have no defense, nice. so now is the time for you to just. You know, open the page, uh, open the checkbook. Open your yeah. wallet. But this game last year, how sick would this have been? <laughs> That'd be incredible. For real, last year. Okay, we just all said basically 50 50, 55 45 for you for Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Last year, what would we have said for Napoli chances? It would have been 70 70 30. 75. I was yeah. thinking 70 30. How, how absurd is that? Yeah. Still to hear like Napoli, like. Like compared to Barcelona, it still sounds oh, crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's different eras, man. No, I know, but yeah. it's unfortunate that it didn't last. Uh, it didn't carry over to this year. It could be a high-scoring game. Thanks for because of both of the defenses that are are mm. not uh, up to par. Yeah, yeah, they're not there. But it's a good. That's what I'm saying. Again, you finish second place. You finish second. If we, if you avoid Manchester City and Real Madrid, who for me, it's a win. There's no way you're gonna and go Bayern, through against. To be honest, okay. And Bayern. Okay, but I have our three teams. We could have gotten screwed no, no, and got I, I, nothing. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. So when I take a step back and look, I saw a lot of people complaining, saying it was really bad. I didn't think it was really bad. I so you would, say you would be happy with two out of three, of course. Two right? out of three is amazing. I think two out of three is Two out of three is, is great. Mm-hmm. Two out of three. Considering what it could have been, right? Yeah. Again, you finish second. For me, in my book, the way that I see things, you can't complain yeah. about who you get. You put yourself in that position. Mm-hmm. Let's go on to Europa League. And we'll tie in, obviously, the Milan game, the, the games from yeah. Serie A there. Milan gets uh, Rennes. They only have three wins. Mm-hmm. I was checking in their, in their table out of 16. Very low in uh, the league on table. I know you're not excited about this competition, and you kind of wanted them to, to bow out. Mm-hmm. It's so sad because the title of Gazetta was too little too late. And I think that sums up Milan's campaign because they were super wasteful in the early games. The match against Newcastle. If you watch that back today, mm-hmm. I think you'll you'll break the TV. On their home, we should have won. We should have won. You did win in Newcastle at their home. No, we didn't. We tied. No, 
at your at your home. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, not Newcastle. I was talking about Borussia Dortmund. Okay, but I'm saying the the first game. Remember the yeah, opening yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you started off on the right foot. You had game. a billion that, chances. That was, was should have so been many, a win right too many there. chances. I really, if you watch this game today, I think Milan fans will will crack their TVs. It's so disappointing. Also, the game against Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund too. You expect you expect more, right? And you could have gotten there, and you go mm. out on goal difference. That penalty at the end that penalty, to PSG because you lost three zero. Compared to two one, so it sucks. It really sucks to see this. But my glimmer of hope, I actually think that this is, and Milan fans are not going to be happy to hear this. Mm. I think this competition could be really good for you in the Europa League. You've never won it before because you've always uh, been in Champions League. Mm-hmm. It's a it presents itself a good opportunity for Pioli, a route to get fifth place because fourth place in Serie A is very competitive. We have Bologna sitting in fourth place right now. Mm. You're good. You're in third right now. But either way, it helps Italy with the coefficient points to try to maintain that fifth spot. And I think for Pioli, who this is going to be his last year, by all remarks. Everybody, everybody's been saying that. I, what, you, who did you... <laughs> you don't think he's going to... I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's, I think it depends. You're not going to gonna win the Scudetto. Mm-hmm. Coppa Wait. Italia, whatever. Nobody. If, you, if he goes out with a Europa League title, mm-hmm. I think he could look back and say... It's a good way for Pioli to end his Milan but career to win the Europa okay, League. Okay, but you're saying this is surely his last season. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not agreeing with you. But let's play a little devil's advocate. Before the season started, what was Milan's season that would be successful? You'd be like, oh, if they did this, this will be a successful season. And let's be realistic now. You have to finish top four. Yes. And you should be close to the Scudetto race. What's close? Close. Within points. Like competitive in the Scudetto like race. Four to five points. Six. Okay, six. so if he yeah, still does that, and it's all, still early. It's still plenty of time to do it's that. It's more so, it's okay, my problem with Pioli, for sure he has to remain the coach. I'm not disputing that. My thing is it feels like the end of the cycle with Pioli and it's time to go on to the next route. I say that because of the players that have come in, yeah. the amount of new players that have come in. Also the communication of the way things have been with players confused on the style that they should play. They're kind of like in this weird limbo period. Is it his fault, everything? No, he gets... Pilly gets way too much blame. I just think it's a good moment for Milan in the summer to reflect. They got this new new owner, no, not new ownership, but new directors who came in. They could choose their coach on who they want, and they could start building a, a tactical plan that fits what Milan wants to do in the future. I think it can't be that Pilly guides this team then forever. Listen, no, Ibrahimovic, I think uh, he's gonna he's gonna have to sit down with Cardinale. He's gonna have to just you know. Off the off the you know the Record. camera, he's gonna have to just uh, say, hey, listen. Why do you disagree? On what? With Pioli. I'm not, I didn't say that. I said Listen, I don't disagree or I don't Pioli, agree. So what do you, but what we got to be it? realistic. Okay, but which which side do you want? I'm saying that Milan should move on from Pioli at the end of the season. Never to be sacked throughout the season. The part where I at the end of the, the season. The part where I didn't agree with you is uh, Europa League coefficient. To be honest, I don't think, even if he goes to the final or say even wins it, I don't think that really does He's gonna, much for really? a team no. like Milan. But that's I, a moral. That's like a moral victory agree, for a coach. I kind of agree with Michael. To go out with a European yeah, we're title. We're talking about Milan, not Atalanta or anything. Okay, like that. but that's fine. But we're talking about Milan that has seven Champions League in the past. But I don't think past. that something be like, oh, maybe we'll keep Pioli because he won us Europa. But I never said keep. I, that's the complete opposite of what I said. Mm-hmm. I said you still get rid of Pioli. That's a good way for him. His sending off is Pioli winning but the what? Europa League. But what does P- that's what I'm saying? What does Pioli have to do? if if there's no point of winning Europa Europa League? Why don't you just bow out of the competition and try to fight as much as you can till May with Inter? Because you're just causing an extra distraction. And for me, at least, because at Europa least you can League, win a trophy. Because at least you can win a trophy. For me, Europa League isn't something to say. Oh wow, you did a great job. You want a trophy? Uh, you want I'm, the Europa League? I am kind of a split between what Marco thinks and what you say, Mike. At the end of the day. Being last on on your uh, being eliminated by the Champions League and being the fourth place and that it will be just a total disgrace. It will be just a you know. The, I get it. The door is three quarter open for Let Pioli just him. to get out. So, having said that, I think you have to judge Pioli and the staff entirely for what they've done at AC Milan. Every week we have players that are injured. I mean, and there's got to be something that this guy here is working. The staff that he, the training staff is part of the coaching staff. It got to be something that is not. It's not working up there. Maybe you know you have to judge the the complex of the of the team that surrounds the uh, Pioli and said, "Hey, by the way, what are you guys are doing? Maybe you are over, uh, you know, you are over uh, taxing the, the the players with uh, you know unnecessary uh, stress." Uh, but the Europa League, the extra competition a week, is that does that merit playing your players extra? Is it worth well, it? For, AC for me, Milan, I don't think it's listen, worth it. Listen, as an AC Milan fan, I'm telling you yeah. right now, our season it's almost. Uh, 
not a total failure, but it's not a, it's a failure because when you are AC Milan and the, the DNA of AC Milan, you need to go far, the far as you can on the Champions League and the Campionato. Marco said the Campionato is over. I and I agree that. with him. No, I, I agree you with th- him. You think if Milan even bowed out no. of Europa League, they'll, they'll, they'll win the Scudetto? Not not but, do, but do they From, win the Scudetto? Maybe not win, but I think they'll get... Um, moderately close a respect a respectable I amount. Both. I think that they could get a respectable no, I amount. I don't agree. So. Both in the Scudetto Milan race already, and in the Europa but League. But Milan already have trouble. Why would you play them in a competition that, in my eyes, it I bring, don't think also, it Europa League brings you a lot of money. And it's a it's a route to first, first of place all, too. Europa League, you don't get nearly as League. much money for Champions League. I think winning the Europa League, you get as much money for leaving the group stage of the Champions League. Well, and I don't do think that. that's Milan's biggest they thing didn't either. Do that. Listen, I, but I'm just saying, I don't think it's worth the squeeze for the players who play an extra I, game. I, a I week did not like for the Europa League. My, it's not, not the game a week anymore. Mark, like, to be honest, whatever with you, the case is, I did not. Right like. now, every extra game is a would be a liability for Milan in that competition. I see, because I don't see Milan a, a Europa League. Team. I think Milan can get. I think Milan could get. Towards the semifinal, mm-hmm. even with rotation players in the Europa League, eh, I don't know. Yes, and listen. then they have to play the semifinals and the final. Listen, that's listen. what I think. I would it, still play the same. I, I play Simic. I play all the uh, the fellows that Camarda uh, yeah. for the Europa League. Yeah, 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 come on, it's not Coppa Italia, Mike. Listen, listen, the glass. Yeah, Coppa Italia, they take it seriously now. What are you talking <laughs> no, about, come Mike? On. Mike, they in should America. take the Coppa Italia more seriously <laughs> than the Europa League. Too. No I way. Think. Yeah, Coppa Italia over Europa League. Yeah, never in my life. What would you prefer? You could have one. Europa League. Come on, I let Mike listen. You get Champions League for winning Europa League. Europa League is second. Second grade, bro. Mm. It is second grade. Yes, but it's better than Coppa Italia. <laughs> Coppa Italia is like below zero grade. No, I, Come on. I don't know. For Coppa Italia and, and especially all the uh, all you the teams. You got to play the Supercoppa, but, right? The Supercoppa. Yeah, Coppa, big deal. But the Coppa Italia, everyone plays their starters. At, at least no, from no. the knockouts on. No, yeah. from like what the semifinals knockout? on. I don't listen, know. Michael, for me, for let me, us know in yeah, the comments. Glasses are full, but in this particular case, in AC Milan, the glasses got no water inside. It's not full. It's not half. It's cracked. So we have to see if we can Seats get somebody out. just to, you know to fix yeah. the, the cracks and see if we can just uh, starting to fill uh, fill in or again with some uh, some water or some uh, some juice that is gonna bring the the fan the fan and uh, and all the, the you know the people because we are AC Milan. It's not, forget about Pioli. We are AC Milan. The single people like me, the fan. A similar, I think that uh, Jerry Cardinale, if he watches the podcast, is gonna know that uh, AC Milan is the the biggest fan base, almost one of the biggest, maybe first or second in the world with the fan base. We got hurt when AC Milan goes out, and you know what? We have to save the face, Mister Cardinale. So now is the time for you to sit down, just look at the checkbook, and buy. Now, I mean, I'm not saying to overspend. We need to fix our problem. We mm. have a problem. We have a defensive problem. Leave Pioli alone. Pioli is not, the, 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 you know, 100% our problem right now. Mm-hmm. We need to fix Reinforcements. our problem. Yeah. We have a defensive problem. We need a brand new defense. Mm. Midfield and forward, we are okay with it. We need to spend money on defense. Not just, a, you know, a, a little uh, cerotto, we say Vendi. in Italiano. Yeah. In Italiano, il cerotto, noi non abbiamo bisogno. <laughs> abbiamo bisogno of a big patch. What's a cerotto? Cerotto, is, cerotto a is a band-aid. It's a band-aid. That's funny. Okay? So, so the, the one one thing, for we, we're not disagreeing at all. Just next thing for Milan, they won 3-0 against Monza, but the cool story was uh, Giancarlo Simic, mm. who uh, Mike brought up. Uh, 18 years old. He they purely credit to him. He switched to a back three. He played Pobega there, and then a few minutes in, he had to come off. And Giancarlo Simic, I remember when he was coming in, I was like, "Oh my god, what? This is an incredible moment for him. It's actually a good game for him to come in." I, I thought against Monza, eighteen years old, and, and then debut. he scores right after coming in. That's beautiful. Dream debut. Yeah. There's a picture of his parents that were crying, crying in the San Siro. Beautiful, beautiful. He looks like a big boy too. He doesn't seem like he's just he eighteen years old. He does, huh? <laughs> But listen again, again. Simic, Simic, is a, it's a, it was not by default our defense. It was a contingency. Yeah, exactly. So he, he, we had to get him in because we had nobody else. Like yeah, the, for sure. Okay, yeah. the project of bringing this you, it was not a project well taught before ahead of the time. It's just like, like Allegri when he brought in young players. That's it's because it. he had to. Like, it, a, yeah. like Amarda. Yes. Or yeah. then Donnarumma in that case with Milan with the Sinisa. Well, but Donnarumma was Donnarumma, more thought out. It was more thought out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But they right. had fights with the keepers, right? right. Diego Lopez Diego Lopez and back then. Yeah, but, but Mihalovic, like, I felt like Mihalovic had a clear plan. Yeah, he saw Donnarumma 
complain. I said this guy here. No, he, he was good, and also was like, let me give this guy a chance because I'm not, I'm not like in the first and second. Simic and Kamada were more like, all right, we really need. Uh, but I like, like that. I like those situations, yeah, yeah. Marco, because you know, it gives a, a young kid the a opportunity chance. to play. Yeah, yeah. He gets all of the jeers out, you know, of uh, playing in San Siro in front of eighty thousand j- people. Jitters, yeah. He went up scoring. Okay, he went up scoring. Beautiful. And uh, it's a beautiful story. Yeah. Okay, yeah. whether uh, it's going to just go uh, further or whatever, it's a beautiful story. You debut, you put, uh, the, you know, your AC Milan uh, jersey on in front of the big stage and uh, you perform and you went up scoring a, a spectacular goal, a beautiful goal because it was not easy. A defender to find himself yeah. almost... Uh, good, uh, positioning, good, yeah, positioning. good positioning. Good yeah. positioning. That means he reads well the game. And I give a lot of credit to... Uh, to the, the, the coaching staff of, of the young youngsters. Uh, Abate you know, is uh, yeah, doing Abate, amazing. Abate is not a, it's not a joke. Abate is doing He's a doing great, great job. Work. And so, Leao uh, Leo did really well to set him up too. Leao, yeah. uh, all game, he did a, he had a great match. Yeah. And it was easy against Monza. I think you guys, Milan fans needed a win like this. They needed a 3 a, 0 a win, win where we could say, All right, guys. It was relax. not an easy game, Marco. Paladino, uh, Monza is not an easy, Monza I, is not an easy I, team. Uh, I mean, you think that before, but they Milan gave it to them. I was surprised how well yeah, and we, officially we you well. guys beat them. No, we played well. We played well. Let's played move well. on to the last Europa League uh, draw that we have Roma Feyenoord, who Feyenoord, it's like they're obsessed with going to Rome to play against Lazio. Yeah. They played the last three occasions in Europe now against Roma. The Conference League final, which they lost. Last year was the quarter finals against Roma, which they lost. Oh, yeah. And now they, they get Roma again. Um, Feyenoord, uh, Feyenoord is a team that they know super well. Uh, Mourinho even had some back and forth with, with them uh, after they beat them in the final, in the Conference League final. For Roma, this is their competition. This is another yeah. one where they went all in last year. Mourinho said, I sacrificed getting a fourth place spot in uh in Serie A to go all in in Europa League and I had to manage those levels and I really respect that about Mourinho there's a lot we could say about Mourinho there's a lot that I think we're going to say about Mourinho with everything that happened Mm -hmm. Uh, but I really respect that about him because I personally like the Italian teams having this mentality of going out there and trying to win in Europe because it makes us look good and we could get the fifth spot so it's even more important either way Roma is extremely reliant on what we've already known it's the quality of Dybala it's the physicality of Lukaku and when they're not there the loss, it shows. the loss against Bologna. Hmm. The craziest thing for me is I'm not surprised. Yeah. The boys were... Uh, Everybody was expecting that. I, I knew it. I knew it. Ryan and Matt were texting. Some of our friends were texting that don't watch Serie A and they put money on Roma. So we're telling them, we're like, what are you crazy? Like, don't put, yeah. don't put money on Roma. No. Are you like, you don't know this Bologna side? They're really good. Mm-hmm. They're like, come on, Roma's at least gonna tie, right? I was mm-hmm. like, I would never bet on Roma to, to tie, mm-hmm. which also shows the level of the mm-hmm. way things have gone. Uh, should we talk about Roma first or, or Bologna? No, go finish up with Roma. Roma, Roma. I think uh, they, they, they got themselves in a predicament because you lose Libala. I mean, uh, then you lose Lukaku because of a, of a red card. I mean, you're still waiting for Abraham. I think Roma can challenge can challenge that UEFA spot, that UEFA uh, championship. They need everybody healthy. Yeah, but it's gonna cut, they're going to get Abraham. You never I know. Mean, so in I February, think, uh, Dybala's going to be back. Lukaku is so going to be I back. I would say that and Roma, I, I will not count Roma out. Roma, Roma, they might, uh, they for, might go. For Europa League, I really see, I think Roma and Milan can go mm-hmm. very far. Yeah. Leverkusen's an amazing team that's mm-hmm. still in it. West Ham, obviously, mm-hmm. strong team that's still in it. I truly see Roma and Milan, with, without a doubt, too, one right? of them are going to the final. Galatasaray's in it also, I forgot, right? Yeah, but Galatasaray, they, they don't finish their chances. No. I, I think they'll get... But they I think had, they'll, they had probably one of the tougher groups, and they did very well. I was surprised how well they did. And I, I was very surprised how many chances they had. Mm. I think they'll pay we'll for see. not being able to convert chances. Maybe. In a let's go to Bologna. Yeah, let's, let's do Bologna. Oh, by the way, one thing about Roma too. Let's talk about Renato Sanchez, <laughs> who got subbed into a match. Yeah. That was how tough. M- how many minutes was it? That was tough. 18 minutes, <laughs> he gets subbed out, and it's the confusion on his face. Yeah, That's he didn't like expect scary. It. He didn't expect I didn't that. understand Mourinho's uh, reply to him after. He, he, apolo- said, he said to me, I apologize to him but, and all the stuff. But he didn't give a reason? He was not running hard enough. It, it must have been uh, something that they didn't uh, disclose because yeah, it wasn't an injury. It was that, it was that no, it was a personal thing. For he sure, mu- he must have not maybe didn't go on the 50-50 ball, or he didn't like what he did. Mm-hmm. A certain, it had to be one of those. Well, I, I also saw quotes from him. They weren't about Renato Sanchez, but they could have been about Renato Sanchez. It was just about players mm-hmm. not uh, playing up to par. But you could also talk about Pellegrini to be mm-hmm. one of them. Mm-hmm. Who mm-hmm. I can't believe that I lo- I, I can't believe that's the same player. Yeah, yeah, but. Just saying, I can't believe it's the same player that oh uh, God, yeah. three years ago Jeez. I was obsessed with. That when he was playing, he was amazing. Very different. Very bad game. Yeah, Roma, bad game. Roma just bad, bad couple of seasons. Roma just game. dominated. Uh, it is credit though to Bologna. Bologna. 
Yeah, they were dom. Sorry, they were dominated. Mm -hmm. Bologna were incredible. I we already knew that Thiago Motta ha is a coach. He's a coach for the future. He's a coach for the present. The way that his team plays, they suffocate you. Even with their press, it's like they put you in a bad position time after time. The first goal is so oh, well God. worked. The ball through and Doy running in yeah. behind. I think he did the same move fifteen times, mm -hmm. and Roma couldn't do anything about it. And then they have a they get goals from everywhere. Even the midfielder Moto running in from from the center mm -hmm. to get the goal. And Bologna never stop. They play. They pass. And what's so funny is we get obsessed with the goals. Attacking wise, they're actually not that great. Bologna's numbers. They mm -hmm. only have like nine to twenty goals. Bologna on the yeah, season. But defensively, one of those. Defense, the defensively, defense unit. only Inter and Juventus mm -hmm. have fewer goals conceded than them. Calafiori, he turned them into a center back. He was a yeah. fullback. He turned them into a center back, and they defend as a unit. They could defend low, but they could also press high. They've got this ability to adapt. That's beautiful. I really like how. And first of all, I think and this game is two seven two. On the paper. <laughs> oh yeah, he sees a sideways, right? Horizontal, right? Horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing, the thing with a Bologna, just one of those teams where they have that that year, everything's falling for them. And I just like how Mota plays the youth, and you can see the kids want to play. Mm -hmm. You just see them running, yeah. pressing, and they're really playing for the coach. And I think Mota could be a nice little option for Milan in the future. Mike, 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 okay, don't put words on my mouth. This is my dream. Not <laughs> it's my dream. It's either him or that Zerbi. You know, the Zerbi is tougher. I wouldn't mind even Paladino. I wouldn't mind even Paladino. I want players to believe on a coach. That's what I'm saying. And Come on, yo, yo, enough with ideas. Milan. Yo, let's talk I about... I want players to believe on a coach. Let's talk about Bologna. Okay, Bologna. Forget I about where... I want Thiago Motta. Let's, let's let Thiago Motta enjoy his uh, time yeah. but, uh, at but Bologna. Purely, you know, we don't, we, it's not that we don't want you at the AC Milan. Just win what <laughs> you have to win right now, and then we'll talk, okay? But, but I do want to add, though, it is refreshing to see a Bologna team who, in recent years, is content of staying mid-table and just okay of not being relegated. I like Mota came here. He changed things. He's playing youth. He's playing fun football. He, he's playing football that you want to see. You, the modern day football, especially for an Italian coach, you want to see these ideas. You want to see these kinds of uh, the hunger from the kids. And I think it's the future. I don't think that Mourinho football... I think that's prehistoric, and I think this is the way to move forward. So I really, I'm really ruined for Bologna. I like how they play, and I'm all, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon. I'm happy for them. What's so funny is that you're totally right that they were just tenth. Everything was tenth with Bologna. You think of Bologna, ah, they're gonna be tenth place, 11, mid table. And with a lot of the players that they signed, because they went a completely different route. They went more physical players that were not really Serie A ready, is what a lot of Bologna fans thought. They've put it together, and they've put it together in a way that's incredible. Zigze mm. is a brilliant yeah, footballer. He's good, he's good. He wasn't even a nine, and he's turned into a him. crazy yeah. player that looks like he could become one of the top top players. Very confident on that with Soon the ball. Very in uh, in Serie A, he's got a great technique, but he likes to get stuck in. He's like six one, six two, super technical on the ball. Turns up in the big moments. I love a player like that, and he's done it. He's he's pulled up big. I think it's six goals in the last eight games or nine games, something like mm -hmm. that, and, and coming up in, in those big moments. The beautiful thing about Bologna is that it's all from what we always talk about, the sporting director, right? Sartori. They brought in Sartori, and everything changed. Exactly. There they, we go. That's a key right there. It's a mastermind. And you, you look at some of the greatest teams the teams that struggle, like Manchester United, right? That have no vision, that have no thought. They just throw money and money at everything. Yeah. And then you see the opposite, which is this Bologna, which is a side that I love, the underdog. Though we have, to, we don't have a lot of money. We have to outsmart. We have to find better players. We have to make the group mm. better than anything. We need to get the next best young coach they don't go for to the put things star. together. They look at the group. They That's find the, the and, when, and when they do that, it's special. Mm. And you look at Sartori's track record. He took Chievo Verona from Serie C due. To a Champions League qualifying route. Kiel Verona. It was a miracle. Then he went to Atalanta. Built up Atalanta. By the way, after he left Kiel Verona in 2014, oh, downhill. Mm -hmm. Atalanta. He built up Atalanta. He found these players. He's an incredible scout. Some of the greatest players that you talk about that moved on to great careers, Sartori found them. He is doing this again with Bologna. Oh, He's not a guy that goes on the TV. He's not loud. He doesn't talk. Low key. Behind the scenes. Super low key. Mm -hmm. Does his job do you know and that? gets results. So it's right that we talk about him. Tegomot is amazing. Tegomot is going to become one of the next best coaches, I think, in the world. But it's also Sartori and this Bologna side 
who have put a good team in front of mm-hmm. Tegumota to allow him to do but this. But those partnerships are very vital. That's why Conte wanted uh, Marota at Inter because they work well together. You want a director and a coach to talk the same language. Mm-hmm. You know, you want them to understand each other what they want. And I think a lot of that goes under uh, under the radar. And that's Marco. I agree with you with Manchester United. They're just one of the teams that they hope money is the solution. But in reality. You got to look at the guts of the team and really target the problem to solve. At the it. end of the day, this is the only thing we have left in Italian football. When you yeah. think about it, the, the only thing that we do top, top, because we don't have the best league, we don't have the best players, we're not the home of that. But when you talk about putting things together, our sporting directors and our coaching is next level. Yeah, next level. Sure. There's guys that you never even heard of that if they, I really wish, there's a part of me that wishes there was an alternate reality where I could put. A guy like Marotta at Manchester United or Sartori at Manchester United, just to see. And then all the media is going to go crazy. Look at this genius that Manchester United discovered. No, no, they're doing it. They're doing it on a small level. Exactly. They're doing Smaller it on a, on a budget where one Manchester United player pays for 10 years of Can you believe this Bologna. Stuff, yeah. But I, I, know, I know we sound old and grumpy, but it's just a beautiful part Listen, that we don't get to example highlight. example is Giuntoli. Giuntoli at Napoli, the team was like the, 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 the perfection. He moves from Napoli, he goes to Torino. Juventus, all of a sudden, it's like, uh, uh, you know, they, they got cured for, from a, a very, very, very bad disease. So Juventus now, it's, you know, running a six-cylinder. And he just joined. So he hasn't even gotten the real touch so yet. I guess it's the mentality and the approach to the to the, the building up uh, the team that I think what's what's uh, what's key for those sporting directors. And no, on, the, on the reverse side, look at Napoli. Napoli has got the same team of last year, except for mm, Kevin J. Yeah. And then here we are. That's Napoli looks like a and team that, uh, you know, is having a little trouble, you know, with the hope that the things are going to get much also better. Also communication, right? The communication it's between very important. and being close. I've heard Jubilee talk about traveling with the team and mm-hmm. understanding that you have to take responsibility. Players can't get away with certain things if the director is there that has courage, that has right. hey, an ability. That's it. Paolo Maldini for, for Milan mm-hmm. was another one of those players. But Maldini went a little bit further because mm-hmm. he wasn't just a figure. He was somebody that also chose players. You can players. also say Tare for Lazio also. And that's another one. That's right. it. That's it. But I was they, about to bring it in. But I, the, the difference with that is that Lazio never built anything substantial. You look at Lazio, they don't develop any youth players. They haven't had good scouting. They made awful deals like Muriki, yeah. for example. They made awful deals in the last years. For me, that's not the same Maybe level the same. as those. But then again, also, the director can only do so much. If the owner or the CEO <laughs> says something, right. there's limitations. Mm-hmm. There's some clubs that says, this he, here's mm-hmm. the keys to the club. You do you. But then there's also some owners like ADL that limits, you mm-hmm. know, and says... Listen, whatever I say yeah. goes. And I think the ego is Listen, a big thing. He that a lot of people don't talk about. though, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. But overall, at a... Lotito's a better example. Yeah, Lotito, at some point, Because Lotito's camera. like, who, he's like running the club. Marco, we yeah. were watching the game here at the studio. And uh, when uh, yeah. when uh, Lazio went down, uh, the camera went a couple times on Lotito. And Lotito, you Bro. know, seeing Lotito without Tare next to him. He had a nice little like hat, too, also, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I like to style I You look good in one of those. Yeah, I might. So, uh, I wouldn't lie you in the studio with yeah. that. <laughs> Anyway, with or without it, it looks kind of strange being uh, Lotito <clears throat> just being uh, by himself out there. I think it was his son next to him, and uh, Tare is not there. Tare, Tare was uh, it was it was the key for uh, Lazio to, <clears throat> to make uh, to make all of the moves on the market and then to bring some a bunch of players uh, mm-hmm. into the equation and for make sure. Lazio the, the the Lazio that we knew. Uh, this one other uh, coach uh, that we didn't talk about because uh, the team they played is not in Europe, but I think he's at that level and he's gonna get there. Younger. Early on in his journey is Gilardino with mm-hmm. Genoa, who once again, just like the Bologna uh, match, I said to myself, I'm not surprised that Genoa, I fully expected Genoa to get a point against Juventus mm-hmm. because of the style of play, because of the matchup, because of Gilardino, because of the way that Genoa, the, the thing that impresses me about Genoa too is that they are very upset even at results that would make a lot of teams happy. When I saw them tie 2 2 to Napoli, and after the match, they looked like they lost, mm-hmm. I said, my gosh, this is not a team that just came from Serie that's B. That's a mentality. That's happy. But that's a mentality. Of it. I think, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think like you can compare a lot to other teams. I think it's a mentality of the club, and it shows with that anger tying to the reigning champs. It shows that you're not just here to stay in Serie A. And I think it says a lot about the club. It says a lot about the ambition. It says a lot about... Uh, the owners of the club, and I think that's a positive mm-hmm. sign. You got to show that you're angry. Mm-hmm. They they got results against Lazio, 
Napoli, Roma, Juventus, and nearly against Milan. I know. Nearly. It was they went down to the yeah, death. Yeah. Their home Skin stadium the is a fortress. 25,000 season tickets sold. There's a big enthusiasm about the about the Without team. Without Retegi, too. Without, Without Retegi, mm-hmm. which no, surprised point. me. Gumensen is, mm-hmm. is a baller. Albert Excellent. Baby. He is. He's good. He Excellent. reminds Excellent. me so much of when I used to watch Dybala at Palermo. That that sort of tricky good, player, the low socks. Physical too. He's physical too. Great player. I think six goals now. That guy is not going to last in Genoa. They're going to somebody's going to snatch him out. That's true. So. Dragoshin too in, yeah. in the back. They have a. They built a team. They built a, a little team that fights. And what's so the reason why I didn't like this matchup is because for Juventus, you watch if you watch Juventus's games, they love when the other team has the ball. Mm-hmm. Their comfort zone is exactly. staying compact, fighting. We're going to get a corner kick. We're amazing at that. Set pieces, counter. Genoa play. Almost the same Similar way. Football. They're nineteenth, and when I read that they're nineteenth in possession, I said, "Oh, Juventus! Juventus don't have the creativity to they break don't, down a defense they, like that. They don't yeah. have that. They're, that's not where Juventus is yeah. great at." He said before the game, we were watching the game at the studio. He said that before the game, and that's sure enough. I said, "Hey, listen, I, I see even you remember I said that, that the Genoa is not going to win, but he's not going to lose this game either." So, uh, well, you know, we put at a tie. I mean, very unfortunate for Juventus because uh, I'm not sure if it was Bremer uh, that, uh, you know, he tried to push the ball in the last couple, uh, couple yeah. uh, minutes. Oh, yeah, he didn't yeah. go in, but the goalkeeper made a spectacular save. Mm-hmm. Hey, for you to make a, the goal count, the ball has to go, has to touch the net mm-hmm. on the bat. And, they, and they, the had, they had the Bonnie so, with the handball that, yeah, you know, you yeah, look back uh, for sure penalty. Uh, when you look at it, that's just the way that it is. But let's mm-hmm. speak in football terms. We we bring that up. The refereeing in Italy, it's... You know what the craziest thing to me? And the Varte. I had yesterday uh, Giuseppe Rossi and Mike Grella. Mm-hmm. Giuseppe Rossi played the top level. He was at one point in the top rankings with uh, Ronaldo and Messi. And we're, we're talking about another penalty kick. And they're like, wait, is that a penalty? Yeah, it is. No, it's not. I said, how the hell am I sitting at this table with two guys like this... And they're questioning what a penalty. We've lost all sense. We've lost yeah, every true. sense true. of what football means. That the best, yeah. the players don't know. The fans don't know what a penalty kick is. That's a deeper conversation. And sometimes our refs don't we, know. <laughs> Listen, I got to go back to VAR. I was, sometimes. What about Atalanta today? Look, let's bring Atalanta. I was watching the game on the on the second goal that Atalanta scored. Oh, yeah. That was at the handball with the of uh, uh, Scal- Scalvini. Scalvini. Scalvini pushed the ball with the, with the, with his arm uh, forward. I said to myself, "Oh, they're gonna they're gonna take review, they're gonna take it away." Sure enough, you just don't Boom. know. Boom. <laughs> Hello, what's going on? English. I you know, if you have to apply those rules, make sure yeah. you do it consistently. That's the hardest it's thing. Become that's so a, annoying. It's become a disaster. I saw um, I saw a post or a tweet from a, a commentator that said, how have we gotten to the point where our first reaction when a, a referee goes to the monitor is, oh, he, that's going to be given. Yeah, that penalty yeah, yeah. would be given. The fact that because we know he's going to the monitor and he's going to see that image, that's going to be given. It's like a kind of you, know, you see, yeah, okay, yeah. It's no, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. I don't like the way it's going. Hopefully, within the next year or so, they really straighten it out. Do you and think I, it will? I think the big. I hope so. I think the biggest thing is consistency, not just within the leagues, but within the top five. That's leagues. true. I agree with that. With in, with Europe, yeah. Because sometimes you can say. I hate when people say, oh, that's a penalty in Serie A, but not in Champions League. That's wrong. Why is it that's that? Wrong. Why is it? It that's should be wrong. a penalty in football, and that's it. But I think I think that's more so a fan reaction of because we know that it's much lighter yeah, in Serie A. that's what I'm saying. I so hate that. Like, I think that, okay, I and think that's a fan the reaction. Too, and the defenders have to defend differently in Europe or in Serie A because it's not consistent because it's given here that's and right. it's not given there. I 100% that's not agree. Right. Hey, Marco, but, uh, you know, I've been reading lately that MLS is going to implement those new rules yeah. for, uh, you know, uh, making uh, the, the ref explain or the bar explain what yeah. was the decision. And, and time 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 seconds to try to, to you know, to not like replicate that. or mimic a little bit what they do in uh, the American football over here, which I think is a great idea. I think it's an excellent because, idea, uh, yeah. The public deserves to know exactly yeah. what decision was made and why. We're left clueless. So uh, that's for sure. But yeah. it's I, w- true. I wonder if they're actually going to explain things or they're just going to say what it it's is. It's still though. a start. It though. is good. It, yeah. It's a start on the right direction where MLS is going. We've with been this. preaching mm. this thing here for a long time. So finally, finally, the rumor is starting to uh, not because I'm not sure because of us, but a lot of people well, yeah, they say that's hey, the fans for sure. Hundred <laughs> oh, percent. Hey, we wanted to know what's going well, on. Yeah. And what Mike said is I think is very important. How can you just be? 
worrying that a, 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 you know, a very soft penalty in Italy is going to be given and then yeah. on EPL, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the Spanish Premier League or in France, they're not going to give it. Yeah. So this consistency is key for, the, for soccer to grow uh, health-wise because, you know, we cannot really say, oh, in Italy it's, it's A, in France it's B, in England it's D. I, enough enough because you know mm -hmm. we play international competition and we want to make sure that the rules are applied equally regardless mm -hmm. of your uh, geographic uh, you know location, uh, location. <laughs> yeah. it should be a governing body one other thing sure. since you brought up MLS I know we don't talk about American soccer on uh, on us but it's a little bit more close to home what they did with the US Open Cup has like rattled me up I'm so upset I'm so upset oh, yeah, that yeah. they pulled the teams out of the US Open Cup and it's a little bit more personal for us we're at the Brooklyn Italians party mm -hmm. the Christmas party Brooklyn Italians is a historic club a historic club in terms of setting the foundation for American soccer in this country who won the US Open Cup mm -hmm. and when you hear them they're like so disappointed because they're trying to get back into things and there's no hope because they took away MLS teams from a U.S. Open Cup, which is the only thing that I I don't like MLS. I don't watch it. I, I watch the big games. I watch, you know, finals, whatever. Yeah. I actually like the Open Cup because there's tradition. We've done it in this country before. It's the David versus Goliath. You get the small team against a big team. I watch those games because it's a little bit fun. Youngsters get the chance to play against an MLS yeah. club. They'll get discovered. They'll go on to greater yeah. things. And we get rid of that because yeah. it's for money, for power because you're not running the competition for me I you know it's, so it's certain this is certain actually american uh, you know american football the mls because we know the, uh, was the, the two peters we were discussing that at the brooklyn italian by the way mike there was good food mm. you know any greeks mm, yeah oh wonderful <laughs> Pete, uh, pete's wife you know oh yeah okay yeah so but uh uh you know nice atmosphere as, as always and uh you know the thing is that that was a, this major discussion. I mean, uh, you know, people, they, they care. You can have all the time those uh, 15 teams or 20 teams uh, slug it off. Nobody goes down. Nobody gets, uh, nobody goes up. Nobody goes down. There is no challenge coming from the bottom. In other words, the, the, the table is set. It's like basketball. No promotion from the bottom. Yeah. It's like there is no incentive for, uh, for people to just uh, showcase for, for the you, for somebody else, for um, a new organization to come up and challenge the, the status quo that they have. And so you know it's not what our sport's about. Yeah. At and the core of our sport, our sport is a poor man's sport. Yeah. It's a reason why you have a ball, you play in any part of the world. It's the complete opposite of it. And I get, they say the, the schedules, but then they created the League's Cup. Mm -hmm. It's all about control. I think they feel threatened with the USL that's trying to come up, but it's, you have to, not everything is a good business decision. Just because numbers wise, you know, it doesn't yeah, earn no, you the most yeah. money. Long term, for me, you hurt the sport in this country. Yeah. For young kids. And you know what this reminded me of too immediately once I saw the links and all the media coverage on it? I thought about when the Coppa Italia did this with excluding, I believe, Serie C teams for the Coppa Italia. What was it, two years ago that they didn't allow Serie? It's, I don't want to get, I don't wanna get the, this wrong. It reminded me of the Super League. Is what it reminded me of. Mm. I don't want to get this it wrong. Because that's exclusion too. Yeah, the Super League. Yeah, and guess what? Yeah. The fans revolted. And guess what? They got rid of the Super League, right? Maybe it was... I don't want to get this wrong. Don't go me on it. But I believe uh, before three years ago, Coppa Italia started, included, included the Serie D teams. And recently, the past couple of years, they... They eliminated. They eliminated yeah. it and yeah, yeah. started from Serie C I'm not sure forward. About the timing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. another part of the Dave, Dave versus Goliath discussion because we saw a lot of upsets in Coppa Italia and saying, "Wow, this team in the fourth division just beat uh, Juventus or yeah, or whatever, just beat a Serie but, but B our team." Our, or our Coppa like Italia is, is wrong too. I don't like our Coppa Italia mm -hmm. because you look at other leagues, you look at like FA Cup. There's mm -hmm. actually brilliance of that. Mm -hmm. You have to make for me. You have to make the big team play away. At the small team. That's where you get the beautiful storylines. When they have to go play yeah. at a City of B team's club or City of C team, if they make it that way. Right? In Germany, that's what's happening right now. There's a team. Bayern got eliminated. Uh, yeah, no, Bayern got eliminated. And I think it was Dortmund or, or Frankfurt. Uh, we, we, I'll search it up uh, when you guys start talking. That they are the ones who have screwed up. And that's a beautiful story. That's a game that I'm going to watch. That doesn't watch a German game. I'm going to get excited. Our Coppa Italia is boring. Our Coppa Italia Very boring. is so boring. It's become just like, a, uh, all right, all right it's we on. have to play that? Okay, you just get, get, get the guys it on the bench. It would be amazing. It would be amazing if we took the Serie A team and we go made them play. If the other team promotes, make them play away. They put too much power for the bigger teams. Yes, That's it's what it too is. much. They already yeah. have a huge advantage. Exactly. And maybe it doesn't make sense, again, business-wise, because, oh, why does Inter have to travel to go there? 
But guess what? It helps grow. For me, that helps grow the sport. It make will it, be way more exciting. Make it even a financial incentive. Then it's, hey, the winner of the, 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 the players that they win the Coppa Italia, they get, uh, I don't know, uh, a million dollars each. Well, uh, you know I, I, mean? I don't know about that much. but hey, uh, it's, it's something. It's but, something. So let them fight. Well, that's you a lot. Of, first I mean? of all, that's a lot of money. Second of all, I do believe that it's not mandatory, but a lot of the coaches, at least for the smaller teams, they incentivize the players and give them bonuses if they do win something so like that. So Saar broke in. They knocked out Saar Frankfurt yeah, 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 and yeah, they yeah. knocked out Bayern, Bayern Munich. And again, they played both of those games at home. That's they played those games away, at home. Away from oh, wait, they home, played home, at home. Yes, yes. Sir, broken home. played at yes, home. Yes, they had Bayern Munich go there and then scored a 96 minute goal I to win that. it. That was Come crazy. On, everyone, that's, but that's that, the thing that those, those that's are, the thing that gets shared in the yeah. group chat. They make, I remember they make everyone was talking about. When's the last time you ever shared a thing about Coppa Italia in a group chat? Nothing. Uh, I won a Greek play last week. Yeah. <laughs> If you do that, if, if you do that, if you do that, if it's a lower, yeah, lower that's why you shouldn't ask me. You gotta ask someone else. That's more either general. way, whatever. Um, I didn't want to bring up open cup, but you you said it. And for us, we're still we live in America, and this is what always puts me off about American soccer. Yo, tradition, it's important. Our history, I, and this is from somebody. I like goal line technology. I like technology being implemented, but we also got to respect our traditions and to respect our culture, especially because we have none. America is a country we have none. The little that we have. We should at least yeah, preserve embrace it. it. Embrace it. At least. Yeah. In America, you know, it, it, it's kind of that they got the competition out of the, the, the contest. In other words, hey, the sport, the sport itself is a competition. Soccer is a competition. Why did you have to eliminate the people, I mean, the team that they want to try to come from the bottom and challenge? I'm not saying three. Just make it one. Yeah, one yeah, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were talking about at the party. One team. It got to be some team over there that you're starting to build from the bottom and then you challenge the big guns. So, uh, you know, you have to do it. Do we do we need to say anything about Fiorentina? Fiorentina won 1-0. One, one, Beltran scored. A very fortunate three mm. points from Fiorentina. Mm. I, the, the, against Verona, I thought that the game was going to be, a, a, you know, a, a very dark, yeah. dark day, but uh, they managed to pull it through and... Uh, you know, Fiorentina is going to be challenging uh, again. It's going to be probably uh, one for of the teams that is going to challenge. For, yeah, for yeah. sure. They're right there. It's uh, for Europe and maybe the champions could be one of those uh, those teams. And they're another say. one who still haven't put it together completely. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. They With haven't. Nico Gonzalez going he, down yeah, right now. Gonzalez is... But they yeah. haven't put it together in terms of their goal scoring. Like, they've they've had to rely on Ranieri to score, yeah. Martinez Cuarta to score. Beltran hasn't set foot, yeah. Beltran and, and Enzola. Hey, but they're grinding, Marco. They're grinding. This is the yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I mean, for how well they, they did, are. you got to give them credit But what I'm, how, but what I'm saying is they're not there yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, they have, for sure. They could be a really, really, really tough But it team. shows how serious they are, even in the tough moments where everything can go wrong, they're still getting these that's results. That's mentality. So but I think that's a big part they, of it. They, they, again, we outlined all the, the young coaches who are coming up. That's my only hope for Italian football and Serie A is the coaches. Mm -hmm. For me, it's that. It's that at least we have that in we our back the, pocket. We are the maestro. We don't have we don't have stadiums. We don't have the best players. We don't have the best. We have the you best know, coaches. You're stuff. right. That's right. That's the only thing that I'm like. At least we got Italiano coming up. We got Gilardino. We've got Tiago Motta. We, we, what? What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> this guy did like that. Whoa. De Zerbi was coaching at with De Zerbi was coaching at Sassuolo and now they're talking about him they're West talking end. about him for uh, a national team. Manchester City and Real Madrid. Which is amazing. Anyway guys, thank you oh, for Milan. watching. Milan. Milan too. Okay. That's yeah, it. that's right. It's always about you and Milan. Yeah. It's always about Milan. Are you Milan. new here? Listen. It's always about Milan. Listen. He didn't get it. The did you get it? Yeah. There we go. The, the what, is it? what is it? We are the DNA. DNA. Okay. AC Milan. Okay, we are the DNA. Oh, if you piss okay. us off, he's going to be a bad problem. Whether it's Cardinale or whether it's... Uh, you guys call the devils for a reason. We right? are the so? devils, okay? Yeah. The Juventus is fino alla fine. It's never going to be an end for AC Milan. Mm. We here to stay. So we're not... Be, did, you you, did you see Giroud's brother? <laughs> That's Giroud's brother. Oh, it looked like Jesus. Yeah, you yeah, read the Let him read the caption, actually. You got to yeah. scroll. Wow, it looks exactly say. almost like Anto, a, a read this out loud. Read what this says. Jeru's brother looks like a prehistoric version of him. But with the bottom. The bottom. The Bro, bottom. played in BC Milan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of AC Milan, it's <laughs> BC <laughs> Milan. That was good, huh? Oh, I like that. Can you text it to me? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a top caption. Yeah, absolutely. Top That's caption. a nice doll, right? Oh, I'll take that. I'll take Guys, it. thank I you like for it. watching. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ragazzi. Uh, and Forza? Milan. And? And Bari. <laughs>